Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In today's video, we dive deep into the insightful analysis of Peter Schiff, a renowned economist and financial expert. Schiff's perspective sheds light on the current state of inflation, the Federal Reserve's efforts to combat it, and the challenges posed by massive fiscal stimulus packages. With years of experience in the financial sector, Schiff provides a unique perspective that challenges conventional wisdom. Peter Schiff's central argument revolves around the idea that the Federal Reserve's attempts to tame inflation have been largely ineffective. While many believe that the Fed has made significant strides in reducing inflation, Schiff contends that the situation is far from under control. He argues that the recent drop in inflation was primarily due to a collapse in oil and commodity prices, driven by a surge in the dollar as currency traders priced in anticipated rate hikes. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. You know, a lot of people think that the Fed has been successful in reducing inflation because, you know, it went from nine down to three. And so maybe an extra quarter point or maybe a half point will complete the journey, right? Because we're, you know, we're almost there. But we're actually miles away because the main reason that you saw that big drop from nine to three was a collapse of oil prices and other commodity prices that was basically brought about by a surge in the dollar where currency traders were starting to price in all the rate hikes. So the Fed actually already got all the bang for the rate hike buck from that move. Now, Oil prices are headed back up. We're back above $81 a barrel today, um, headed higher. Other commodity prices as well. The dollar has peaked, I think, and is declining. So the headline CPI probably has bottomed out in the low threes, and now it's headed back up. Meanwhile, if you look at the core, which is what the Fed claims is more important anyway, that's still around five. And the decline in the core is far less than the decline in the headline. I mean, it's barely gone down, despite the fact that we've moved interest rates from zero to five and a half. So if, if you know, the terminal rate is, you know, five and a quarter, I mean, five and three quarters, six, that's not much from where we are now. And so why would that actually do anything when we haven't seen a meaningful decline? And also people forget that these rate hikes are in and of themselves price hikes because it's the price of credit, the price of borrowing. And so every business uh, that has debt is now having to pay more to service that debt, whether it's your landlord who's got a mortgage, a commercial mortgage that's resetting, or it's a business that has borrowed money to purchase plan or equipment and has interest rates to pay, that's just like labor costs or raw material costs. It's another cost of doing business that is rising. And so businesses then try to pass on those higher costs to their end consumer with higher prices. So as higher interest rates continue to work their way through the cost structure, you know, you've got more upward pressure. So I don't, I don't see how the Fed has really accomplished much of anything. And also, if you think about the way rate hikes are supposed to reduce inflation, and Powell will admit this when he talks, they're supposed to reduce aggregate demand by making it more expensive to borrow so that people will borrow less and they'll spend less and that'll you know, slow the economy the way they describe it. But none of that is happening. Credit card debt is at an all-time record high. The government budget deficits are skyrocketing. You know, they, they we're on a run rate now of north of $2 trillion a year in deficit spending, and we're not even technically in a recession yet. I mean, normally when you're in a recession, the deficits double or triple, and so but they're already enormous. And so even though the Fed has been making credit more expensive, it hasn't slowed down demand for borrowing. Schiff asserts that the perceived success of the Fed in reducing inflation is an illusion. He points out that as oil prices begin to rise again, along with other commodities, the dollar's strength is waning. Consequently, headline consumer price index CPI is on the rise again, 
potentially returning to higher levels. Schiff also emphasizes the importance of the core CPI, which the Fed considers more crucial and highlights that it remains stubbornly high despite interest rate hikes. Schiff argues that rate hikes themselves contribute to inflation as they increase the cost of borrowing. This means businesses, landlords, and anyone with debt face higher interest payments, which can lead to increased consumer prices as these costs are passed on. Schiff questions the Fed's belief that raising interest rates will reduce aggregate demand and, subsequently, inflation, as consumer borrowing and spending remain robust. Consumers just are paying the higher prices, borrowing the money anyway, and spending it. So all that spending is still driving prices higher. So I don't think the Fed has made any uh, headway at all. Uh, Powell did admit that we're a long way from there, which is my point. I mean, if we're a long way from 2% and the Fed is already at five and a half, you know, how are we going to finish this journey if the destination is, is, is so far in, into the distance? But I thought that the most disingenuous aspect of, of his talk is that he's talking to the nation about the inflation problem and how great a threat it is and how it is how so, how it's so important to the fed you know to extinguish this threat but no mention of the massive uh, fiscal stimulus that is being pursued uh, by the white house and congress because you're trying to put out a fire and congress is pouring gasoline on the very fire you're trying to put out you're, you know, you're not making any headway. What Powell should be doing is what Paul Volcker did when Volcker was in his position and he was trying to fight inflation at a time where the governments were running large deficits. Of course, they weren't large you know, by today's standards, <laughs> but they were large by the standards of the day. And Paul Volcker was you know, harshly critical of the deficits and was scolding Congress, saying, you got to cut spending because if you want less inflation, we need less government spending. We need to, you know, reduce the deficit, balance the budget. But Powell completely lets Biden off the hook in Congress. He acts as if these deficits don't even exist. He's saying we're trying to reduce aggregate demand with higher interest rates. Well, the government is stimulating aggregate demand with massive budget deficits. So which is it? I mean, how are we going to have stimulative fiscal policy and contractionary monetary policy, they're working at cross purposes. How are we going to make any headway? We're not. And ultimately what's going to happen if the deficit spending continues, which it will, the Fed is going to have to choose uh, between a massive increase in long-term interest rates far beyond what we've already seen. I mean, we're at, you know, what, 18 year highs or something like that, 16 year highs. Uh, the yields on the 10 year, you know, out to 30 years are, you know, 4.2-ish. But if these deficits continue and the Fed continues with quantitative tightening, these yields are going to move up to 6%, 8%. I mean, they're going to go substantially higher. And of course, that's going to have a profound effect on the financial sector, on real estate. I mean, the whole economy is ultimately going to collapse when we get a return to those type of rates. In fact, everybody believes that we're going to go back to the really low rates that we had for more than a decade. That's never going to happen. One of the key points in Schiff's analysis is the disconnect between the Fed's monetary policy and the fiscal policy pursued by the government. While the Fed is trying to reduce demand by raising interest rates, the government is injecting massive fiscal stimulus into the economy through budget deficits. Schiff believes this dichotomy is unsustainable and ultimately counterproductive. Schiff warns of the potential consequences if the current fiscal trajectory continues. He predicts that the Fed may have to raise long-term interest rates substantially to counteract inflation. This, in turn, could have severe repercussions on the financial sector, real estate, and the overall economy. But not only are we not going back down to those super low rates, we're actually going to historically high rates. I mean, right now, they're not even average. They're still below average. But I think what the Fed is going to end up doing to prevent that from happening is reversing this quantitative tightening program that has so far shrunk the balance sheet, you know, close to eight trillion. Uh, it was almost nine trillion at the peak. So we're getting close to a trillion dollar decline in the balance sheet. But with these deficits, the way they're going, the Fed's going to reverse and go back to QE and the balance sheet is going to explode. 
In fact, if you look at interest now, interest payments on the national debt, they've gone from a few hundred billion a year to seven, eight hundred billion. I think right now, interest on the national debt is the third biggest expense. First, Medicare, then Social Security, then interest on the debt. Interest on the debt is bigger than national defense. You can believe that as big as defense is, interest on the debt is dip bigger. But interest is growing really exponentially because not only do we have to pay the extra interest on the two trillion a year that we're borrowing, more than two trillion, but every year, let's say $10 trillion worth of debt matures and needs to be rolled over. Well, it's maturing with a coupon of maybe five basis points, 20 basis points, maybe up to 100, 150 basis points, depending on the maturity. But most of it is real short term. Most of the paper that's maturing, uh, the Fed borrowed the money a year ago, you know, two years ago. Well, where were the rates back then? They were practically zero. Now they're five. And so as all this debt matures and has to be refinanced at, you know, five plus, you know, if they want to do it with, you know, six month, 30 day, one year, right? If they want to go all the way out 10 years, well then, you know, but it's still in the fours compared to where it is now. So the costs are skyrocketing. I think that by the end of the year, we'll be at about a trillion dollars a year in net interest payments. And probably by the end of next year, we'll be at two. And I think interest on the national debt will then be the single largest expenditure of the nation, bigger than Medicare and Social Security. And in a few more years, it'll be bigger than all those combined, right? Because what, what happens if the national debt gets to 40 trillion and interest rates go to 10%? That's $4 trillion a year in interest. I mean, we're gonna be at, at 40 trillion national debt in a few years. We're at, we're at 30, almost 33 trillion now. We're adding more than 2 trillion a year. So in three or four years, we're at 40 trillion. And by then, all that low yielding debt will be gone and it will be replaced by much higher yielding debt. So maybe it won't be 10%, but let's say it's seven or 8%. You're still looking at $3 trillion a year in, 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 in interest payments. I mean, it, this is unbearable. We can't afford it. Obviously, something's gonna break before we get to that point.